If you've seen some of my videos, you might notice that when I need to consume multiple observable streams in a template, I might create a separate view model stream in the class like this. And then I can subscribe to that one stream in the template with the async pipe. And as you can see, all of the values from the streams are now available through this simple VM object. I don't need to worry about subscribing anywhere else in the template. So the general idea is that we create a single VM stream that will contain all of the values that our template needs, whether they are from streams or not. So typically that means using combine latest like this, but that doesn't always have to be the case. But the general idea with combine latest is that we are taking all the streams our template uses, these three right here in this case, and supplying them as the input streams to the combine latest creation operator. So this is creating a new observable for us using these three streams. So the stream returned by combine latest, our VM stream, will just be one stream that emits all of the values from those input streams together in an array. So let's get a closer look at how combine latest actually works because that's really important. So I'm going to start a new node REPL session here. If you want to learn how to set this up on your own machine, I'll link to a separate video in the description. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just import a few things from the RxJS library. I'm going to grab subject and combine latest. So I'll just import those from RxJS. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create three separate streams. And each of these streams is just going to be a subject so that I can emit new values on it. So now that I have my three streams, what I'm going to do is set up another stream using the combine latest creation operator to create a new observable stream that emits the latest value from all of those three streams that I just created. So we'll use combine latest to create a new observable and we're going to pass in an array of observable streams as input to that combine latest creation operator. So I'm going to pass in stream one stream two and stream three. So now what we're going to do is subscribe to that VM stream. So I'm going to run vm.subscribe. We're just going to take whatever values we get emitted from that and I'm just going to log them out. So if I run this now, you'll see we'll get this uh, subscription reference returned, but this is just a reference to the subscription itself that we can use to unsubscribe. We haven't actually got any values emitting from this stream yet. And this makes sense because our subjects haven't emitted anything yet either. We just created new subjects and we haven't emitted anything on them. So now that we're subscribed to that VM stream that is made from those three other streams, let's try emitting some data from those streams. So let's try emitting something from the first stream. So I'm going to run stream one dot next and we'll just use some numbers here. So I will try to emit the value one, but we still don't get anything emitting from that VM stream. So let's try it again with stream two this time. We'll just emit uh, the number two for that. Again, we still don't get anything emitting. So let's try one more time with stream three. We will emit three on that. And now we finally get all of our omissions all at once in an array. So we have the value from stream one, which is one, stream two, which is two, stream three, which is three. So the point of this demonstration was to show an important thing to consider about combine latest. And that is that it doesn't emit anything until all of its input streams have admitted at least one value. So now that all of the streams have emitted one value, if I go, if I go back to stream one now and emit something else again, we'll say four, we are immediately going to get another emission containing that four for stream one and whatever the other latest values were for the other two streams. So now we're going to get a new emission anytime any of the streams update because they have all emitted at least once. So we get this array of values containing all the values from our streams, but this is a bit awkward to work with in our template, just having an array of values like this. So that is why I pipe on this additional map operator here. So all we are doing in this case is just mapping the stream and we're using array destructuring to just pull out those three values and then I'm converting them into an object. And what this is going to allow me to do is just refer to them by name in the template rather than by their index. So you can see in the template here, I use vm.greeting, vm.user. I'm not referring to an index of an array, which is much nicer to work with. 
So in general, this probably looks pretty nice. We just create a single stream. We subscribe to that one stream in the template with the async pipe, and then we just have access to all of our data. But there are some other important factors to consider here. So this simple example looks fine, but what about when things start to get a bit more complicated? For example, what about non-synchronous streams? A synchronous stream emits a value immediately, which is what we're working with here. For example, this greeting stream creates an observable of the string hello, and it will just immediately emit that value. But some streams might not emit a value right away. And that's going to be a problem for us because we just finished talking about how combine latest will only emit its values when all of the input streams have emitted. And we have our entire template surrounded in an ng if condition. And that ng if is going to fail if our VM stream doesn't emit anything. So if there's been no emissions from this stream, this ng if will fail and the entire template won't be shown. So what I'm going to do to demonstrate this is in my user service that I'm using for the user stream here, I've set up a couple of different things we're going to use. And one of those is this delayed user stream, which is also just emitting a value of Josh, but it is going to be delayed by three seconds. So let's update this stream to use the delayed value instead. And we're gonna save that and see what happens to our template. So now when this refreshes, you can see we just have a blank screen for a few seconds and then everything pops in. And that is because the combine later stream is waiting for this value to emit before it emits its values. And that creates this very ugly loading time. So we could approach this in a few different ways, but I think the easiest is to use the start with operator on non-synchronous streams. For example, what I could do is pipe on another operator here. We are going to supply the start with operator from RxJS, and we're going to start this with a value of null. So what this does is turns our non-synchronous stream into a synchronous one because it immediately emits a value, null in this case, and then when the actual value arrives, it will update with that value. So you can see now if I refresh the page, it is no longer getting held up with that three second wait time. And then what we can do with that null value is just handle it however we want in the template. So what we might want to do is use a loading template for when that value is null. So what I've done here is I've set up a separate if condition on this section that is displaying the value from the user stream. And if we have a value for that user that's not null, we will just display it as usual. But if we have that null value that it emits initially, we have this else user loading, which is going to trigger this user loading template. And it's just going to display whatever we have inside of this template. So if I refresh now, you'll see that Initially, we just have this loading indicator, and then we switch to our actual uh, template with the value. Now, this is a pretty simplistic example, obviously, but you could create whatever kind of loading template you want here, whether it's a spinner or some kind of skeleton card or something like that. So that handles one potentially tricky situation, but what about another one, errors? So I've got another stream set up that we're going to use in place of our normal user stream. And it's the same thing again, we are just delaying that value by three seconds as if we're loading it from some server or something like that. But this time after those three seconds, it is going to throw an error. So again, let's come back to our VM stream here and let's change this to user errored. We'll save that and we will see what happens. So at first glance, as we're watching this, it doesn't seem too bad. It looks like the value for the user just fails to load in the template. So we're stuck on this uh, loading template, but it actually stops our count stream from working. If an observable errors, then it completes. And in the case of combine latest, if any of its input streams error, then it too will error and all of the input streams will be unsubscribed, which is why our count stops. So in the case of our VM stream here, this user stream is throwing an error. And that means that the entire VM stream that is created here is also going to throw an error. And so all of the streams in our combined latest will all be unsubscribed and they're all going to stop emitting new values. So again, this is not ideal. We don't want all of our streams to break just because one of the streams has errored. Now there are a lot of different ways you can handle errors. Uh, the quickest way we can solve this problem is have our stream that can potentially error catch that error. 
So what we can do is we can add on the catch error operator. And what catch error allows us to do is when we get an error, when the error is caught, we can replace the stream that is now broken with a new stream. So what we could do in this case is replace it with the empty RxJS stream. And what this is, is a stream that basically emits no values and immediately completes. So the point here is just to stop the error from breaking our combined latest stream. So we want this stream here to handle the error itself. And then it's just going to return a blank observable stream basically. So if we look over on the right now, we can see that that does fix our issue, but it also leaves the template in this constant loading state. It isn't clear that something has actually gone wrong here. So we might want to provide our user with a little more detail than this. So what we might do instead is create a separate error stream like this. So I'll just create this stream, make sure to import ignore elements from RxJS. And I'm going to add that into our VM stream and also make sure we add it to our destructuring here. And now this error stream is going to be available in the template, just like everything else. So let's talk about what exactly is going on with this error stream. Uh, but before we do that, I've got to fix this little error here. Uh, I think VS code messed up my auto import and actually just created an entirely new ignore elements function. That was probably my fault. So I'm just going to import that manually ignore elements from RxJS operators. And now we have our template back, which is good. Okay, so now let's talk about what this user error stream is actually doing. So we've set it up so that this stream also subscribes to the same user stream, except we ignore all emissions from that stream. The point of the error stream isn't to have access to the user data, it is only interested in the error. And if there is an error, we catch it and we return a new stream with the value of that error. So again, we don't want this stream to error and break our VM stream. So we catch it and replace it with a new valid stream. And that stream will just be a stream that emits the error value. So what that means for this stream is that it's going to start with a value of null, just like our other stream. And it will only ever emit a value if there is an error with the source stream. So this stream will emit any errors when loading the user. And this stream will just emit the user value. Now, one thing to keep in mind with this approach is that it will create a second subscription to the observable stream. So we are using the user error stream in this case from our user service. So it's going to create two separate subscriptions to that. So if you're doing this, in most cases, we should make sure we are subscribing to a hot observable like a subject so that all subscribers are sharing the one stream rather than creating a new stream for each subscriber. So our stream in this case is just a dummy example stream. We are just creating a stream of the value Josh using the of creation operator. And so this isn't a hot observable. It's not going to be shared. But what we could do in a case like this is add something like the share replay operator. And that is going to then share this with any new subscribers. So if we subscribe to it twice, we're still just sharing that same set of values from a single stream. Now, if you're not familiar with hot and cold observables, it's probably a bit much to just throw at you all at once. So I'll link to some additional resources on that in the description. So now that we have a stream for our error, what we can do is update our template. So what we're going to do now is add this extra check in our template for that value from the error stream. So we're saying ng if vm dot user error. So if this emits any non null value, we know that it has emitted an error. So in that case, I just have some text here that says there was an error and then I display the error. And if we look over here, when our stream does error, when that user value fails to load, we get our little message popping in here with the value from the error. And again, this is obviously a very simple and ugly looking example, but you could use that value however you like, whether it's a little a toast pop-up mode or whatever, you can make this error look nice and tell the user what is going on with a more useful error. So that's how I use combine latest to create view model streams. Uh, the main thing I like about this approach is that we can just have a single subscription with the async pipe in the template and access all of the values we need through a simple VM object. If you want me to emit all of my latest videos to your YouTube homepage, feel free to click the subscribe button before you go. If you already are subscribed, thank you.
and I hope to see you all in the next video.